Hi folks, I'm Bayo. Glad you are here. I show you today how I paint my fairy castle and the damsel. I first wet some areas with water before I go in with the Daniel Smith watercolors. I have mostly Daniel Smith watercolors. The watercolor is going to be my first layer, so I don't worry too much about the outcome. Just the basic coverage for the moment is fine with me. Over at my blog in the free member area, you can see a longer version of this video. I show also how I sketch the scenery. There are also free printables over there. Not for this specific picture, but just go and see yourself. It takes a while to finish such a piece, so I did speed it up four times and did edit out a bit. I have to apologize, but you're gonna see my head quite a bit. But when I'm in the zone, I sometimes forget that I'm filming. I think you still can see everything you need. And some of you know already that I changed my mind while working, so don't hang on this color for her dress. And here we are, for my taste the color of her dress is too close to the skin tone, so I have to change it. The first layer with watercolors is done. Now I switch to the Prismacolor pencils and start going over the castle first. As you can see I make small circular motions. And so you know I don't press, I go over very lightly.
Sometimes I use the same color in one color area. But as like here, I also switch the colored pencils. There is no fixed rule for that, I just go with what feels right for me at the moment. If I'm not sure, I just test first in a small area. As a next layer, I want to use the border of this napkin and the butterflies. To make them blend in better, I tear the edges. I know some people use a brush and water, but I never had luck with this technique. Now that I have the bits arranged in a pleasing way, I take a picture with my phone, so I can check later where the pieces were meant to be. With Liquitex Matte Medium, I glue down the parts. Next, I went over the whole page with Liquitex to seal it before I go on to the next layer. To remove the overhang, I use a nail file. It is easier for me than trying to cut right on the edge. I also try to file back that straight edge here at the top. I forgot to tear the edge of the napkin before I did glue it down. Next, I added some dripping with watercolors. I let it run from the top and wiped off any unwanted part with a paper towel. So far so good, but watch what I did with my fingers to the face. I didn't realize it here and when I came again to the face with the acrylic paints, I was wondering about it. I first had to watch the video to figure out what and when it happened. Next I went over with my skin tone. I have mixed acrylic paints with a lot of glazing medium to get translucent layers. For more details I go over the lines again and make them a little stronger. But I also gonna add some swirls and leaves as you're gonna see later.
I also sketched a little necklace for her, first with a pencil and then with the pen. The acrylic paint wasn't quite dry here, so I went back to the other side. Here I'm using a Molotow marker. It is acrylic paint and the pen comes in different sizes and can be refilled. Every towel needs brickwork, don't you think? So out with the Tim Holtz stencil. The white Molotow marker was just to make the colors of the border pop. Going over the dark with the pit pens wouldn't work. Yep, the golden acrylic paint wasn't quite dry here, so I had to fiddle around. Not really recommended, but you know how it goes. There was something missing here. So out again with the pencil. Some sort of flower, tree, whatever you want to call it.
now finally the last layer. I did add splatters with watercolor, but I did protect the face and the towers with the bottom layer of a napkin. Okay, guess you know me. I decided it need more swirls, but now I'm really done. I hope you enjoyed this video. See you next time.